Hey family, how you doing? This is your brother Brian Mary Dees. Welcome to Intimorati, Intimorati, everybody. Soul Lightning. Peace to you, peace to your home, peace to your family, peace to your community, peace to your ancestry, peace to my community, peace to my ancestry, and peace to the nation that you, I, and they are building. Peace also to the Gothic forces, the Great Spirit above, the Mother Earth below. I want to single out the ancient order of Ma'at. Always active of Ma'at, Ma'atif. I also um, want to single out her mirror, which we often pronounce as Ma'at, but it's spelled dramatically differently. I always remember that Ma'at appeared dually, and they said that one was for the north, one was from the south. So I want to give a major shout out to them, to Oshun, a wonderful domestic goddess who... Um, I really need to get her statue and get her up on my pantheon and to my brother Ogun. Shalom. So, I want to talk to you really quickly about the word nigger or nigger. Um, apparently, um, a woman named Gina Rodriguez who has pissed off many black people before got into some trouble for singing the word nigga in a um lauren hill song uh this is less about gina uh rodriguez and more about the word nigga understanding that the word nigga and nigger have metaphysical properties i do understand that if you break them down numerically um you will see exactly what i'm talking about as a group we need to stop reacting to people who say the word nigga. I don't care how big their name is. Unless these people are in a position of power, they are. it's worthless for us to spend our energetic capital, if we want to call it that, but our currency, our inner currency on these people. For every person that we get pissed off um, at who calls us nigga, nigger, says the word nigger or nigga, uh, because it's part of a song. We are making ourselves look foolish. We are making ourselves look foolish. Now, I know some of you are going to be like, oh, 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 you know, uh, this conservative Negro right here. Look at him. He's just talking conservative. No, I'm talking truth. I'm going back to Amos Wilson and I'm looking at what he was saying about the word nigga in nigger and what it means. We can talk about it having a metaphysical component all we want. But the ironic thing is the same people who want to talk about metaphysics, if you recall, I have made various videos where I've stated that the problem with the metaphysical concept in the black community is it's all air and no ground. We never bring it down to the ground. So we can talk all we want about the metaphysical properties of the word nigger and nigger, which people do all day long. They'll talk about it. But yet these same people don't talk about psychological or psychohistorically. See, you can't have it one way. You got to have it every way. If you're going to talk about something on a metaphysical level, then you might want to include the, word, the concept of time in your analyses. And that is the problem, is the concept of time in your analyses. Nigga may have started out as a word with tremendous metaphysical potential a thousand years ago. Great, wonderful, love it. However, something happened between that thousand years ago and today, which has depreciated and degraded the word nigga and made it into something that is psychologically and emotionally captive. Now, we don't tend to want to talk about that. Oh, well, the word nigga, it has no impact on us. Really? Then why is it that every time when somebody who is not black says the word nigga, you suddenly lose your mind? Hmm? Yeah, that's because it does have an impact on us. Moreover, we know that it has an impact on us. We know how psychologically damaging it is. And we know that because we've had people who have told us that they stopped saying it because they under they started seeing the negativity of it. I don't use it. Don't do it. Won't do it. 
And I don't do it because, one, I recognized at a very young age the damage that it did to me, what it churned up in me, what it struck in me, what it cut in me. I refuse to use that phrase. I will call you brother. I will call you sister. You will never hear me call somebody a nigga. Ever. Even when I listen to Tupac, even when I listen to Ice-T and they say the word nigga, I will not. I've even gotten to the point where I blink it out in my mind. We will attack people who have no power. Hear me when I say this. We will attack people who have no power over us, who say the word nigga, but we will never attack the people who have the most power to actually put the word nigga into cultural formation. We ain't going after those Jewish persons who have purchased and put up um, black people who would put out despicable music about us. We ain't going to attack them. We ain't going to do the research necessary to find out who owns these major record labels and then put that information out and say, we need to stop supporting these people because they're putting poison out there. We ain't going to do that. We're not going to go after Sean Combs for making hundreds of millions of dollars or Jay-Z for making hundreds of millions of dollars. This is one of the places where I get where I get off when it comes to uh, Boyce Watkins. I love everything that he says, but when I look at people like Puffy, when I look at the people like um, Jay-Z, I, I, from a moralistic standpoint, I can't mess with them people because of the damage that they have done culturally to black people. They have sold themselves to the white man to be to be where they're at. And I can't do that. I can't do it. I love everything else about Boyce Watkins, but that part I cannot do. I wave my hands on that one. Cannot, will not, no. Mm -mm. No. We won't do that, though. We won't go after these wealthy white people who have put millions of dollars into studying us psychologically and culturally in order to infuse in us ideas that make us want to call each other nigger, that make us feel like it is appropriate for us to call each other and refer to each other as nigger. Tupac said it in a song... When he said in the song, When Thugs Cry, he said, we went from brothers and sisters to niggas and bitches. We went from welfare living to worldwide, wit to worldwide riches, but something changed in this dirty game. Everything's strange. We don't even understand how we got to this point. We went from the 1970s where it was brothers and sisters to the end of of the nine, uh, not even to the end of the 90s, to the end of the 80s, where it began to be niggas and bitches. And we don't even question it. We want to beat up on other people because they use words that have become culturally acceptable to us. What are we doing? What are we doing? We ain't even identifying the enemy. We ain't even identifying the enemy. And I know some of you are going to have the response, oh, oh, here comes this black man, this Negro, this man just loving the, the white man. And Shut up. Seriously, shut the hell up. If you're that stupid to believe that's what's going on here, then you are the problem. You are the problem. We are using a word that has been destructive to us, historically. Spiritually, it has been destructive to us. Psychologically, it has been captive to us. It has held us hostage. And for some reason, we are explaining it away as if it never had a negative connotation to it. Do you know how psychologically damaged you have to be to allow somebody else to make you feel good about degrading yourself? By using a word which you felt so 
aggressively against that you banished it from your vocabulary when you started liberating yourself and now you accept that word as part of your culture as part of your norm and you say that it makes you distinct and it makes you feel good a word that you didn't call yourself, but the enemy who had vowed that they would destroy you spiritually, physically, emotionally, they would destroy you. They called you that. And now they got you calling yourself that. Look around you. The vision that white people had when they called you nigger. They've accomplished it. And they've accomplished it. Why? Because you see yourself as a damn nigger. You see yourself only as a nigger. To hell with being an African American. When you saw yourself as being black, you ripped up their vision and you started creating their own. They literally were getting run over by you. Everything you did, you proved you could do it better than them. Within them, within, what was it, 15 years of them signing the affirmative action law, they went after your culture. They went after your culture at a time period when you were producing conscious music that was meant to uplift you beyond the nigger concept, they went after your culture and they put something on the other side of that, appealing to your soldier side. But they bound it with a psychologically poisoning medicine. All the negativity, all the negative stereotypes of the old um, Jim Crow, they bound into that other side of your musical heritage and they started feeding it to you. And you being so damaged because of their war against you, because of the drugs that they were pumping into your community, crack. Why was it called crack, ladies and gentlemen? Don't give me this nonsense. It made a cracking sound in a damn head. It was called crack because it was meant to crack you open. To make you weak. And that's what it did. And they put this pill in there. And they had. Within 15 years of saying. We are going to integrate you into our system. That's what affirmative action was all about. Ladies and gentlemen. It was about nothing more than integrating you into their system. They had you feeling comfortable. Calling yourself. What they had been calling you. For decades. Decades. When you used to hear people call themselves niggas, and I'm talking about in the late 60s now, when you used to hear people call themselves and refer to themselves as niggas, you knew they were working from a standpoint of menticide. And that's a real word, too. Look it up. Menticide. M E N T A C I D E. Menticide. You knew they were working from a standpoint of menticide. And so you would preach to them and you'd say, brothers and sisters, we need to get rid of this. Because if we don't get rid of it, it is going to be our psychological and emotional destruction. Now, from a chakra standpoint, ladies and gentlemen, psychological and emotional, that's your heart, spoken from here, that's right in the middle. You knew if you didn't get rid of that whole nigga concept, it would be psychologically and emotionally damaging and, and destructive. So you had to stop it. And they knew you had to stop it. So now they give it to you in the late part of the uh, 1980s. By the beginning of the damn 1990s, what was happening? You were advocating for the privilege and the right to call yourself something that the slave masters used to damn call you, that the Jim Crow supporters used to call you. As, as Amos Wilson said, do you know how psychologically damaged you have to be 
to accept that reasoning and to see it as just? Of course, they weren't aiming at the older heads. They was aiming at the younger heads. And they got us. And they got us. We are still running around parroting these ideas that for some reason calling each other niggas is good. Now, the funny thing is the same people who would pay black men and women who some of them didn't even want to go into that type of music. This is back in the 90s. I can't speak about today because so many of our black people are brainwashed today. These same people who would pay them to call us niggas and bitches and hoes. Bitch ass nigga, right? You remember that. They would pay us to do that. You think that they'd pay a Jewish man or woman to talk negatively about Jewish people? You think they'd pay white people to talk negatively about white people? You think they'd pay negatively, they, they'd pay uh, Hispanics negatively to talk about Hispanics? No, because the Hispanics wasn't doing that. They weren't going to infiltrate white community and, and, do, and do disastrous things for the community. I mean, they softened their own people up, but they did that because the wealthy didn't want to have to deal with them. And Jewish people, they definitely wasn't paying other Jewish people to walk around and call them negative things. Why? Because one, Jewish people have too much respect for that. And two, they know the psychological cost of doing something like that. It's time that we get past this nonsense, ladies and gentlemen. Black people shouldn't be getting pissed off at other, other people for calling us niggas if we are going to run out there and do it. It's time to bind up that damn, that, that, that hypocrisy, because that's what it looks like. It is hypocrisy. If we are going to support white people and rich black people putting out things that is going to be destructive to who we are by calling us niggas, by referring to us as bitches and hoes and all of this other stuff, then we ain't got no right to tell nobody else to not do it. We ain't got no right. It's time to grow beyond this nonsense. We are not niggas. We are not niggers. There's not a major difference except for two letters. We are none of that. We are black. We are African. We are indigenous. And we are beings. The words do matter. The phrases do matter. Come at me all you want with the metaphysics. That's fine but you better bind it to the physical. If you cannot take into account time as an element and how that interacts with the genetics of our bodies, of our minds, of our spirit, then you ain't talking metaphysics then. You just talking about word analyses from a, from a metaphysical standpoint. You're not actually binding it to the physical. So it has no real dimensional power. You can try to make it have dimensional power. Now, look, I remember what Bobby Hammond said about all this. I get it. I've I've watched his explanation for all this. Oh, do you think it matters? It does matter. And it's funny to me. We we know that it matters. We know that it matters because we talk constantly about how thought forms are are actual things and that they impact what we do and and how we do it. And yet. When it comes to the word nigger, suddenly all that just goes out the window. It just goes out the window. You want to understand why your children are the way they are? It is because of your contradictions. We need to sew this up. We need to sew it up. I'm done with hearing black people get pissed off about the word nigger if you ain't going to bind black people to the same damn standard. That's the point. We need to cut that word out. You want to you want to really rob white people of their power? You want to rob the system of racism, white supremacy of its power? You stop using that word. You stop using that word, brother, sister, black, being, 
instead of people. There is a difference between a people and a being or beings. Massive difference. And if you notice, I work very hard to use that to, to use that word being or beings. Because from a psychological standpoint, from a metaphysical standpoint, from an emotional standpoint, from a historical standpoint, to say being is to say something entirely different than the word person. I remember reading this one um article that somebody posted on Facebook like back in 2016, probably the beginning of 2016. It was a weird little article too. Because what it what it basically uh proposed was that the word person came out of the uh corporate structure. So if you were called a person, you were an artificial entity. So that's what a person was. But if you um, they, but, but if you were, uh, called a people, a people wasn't a composite of multiple persons. A people was a distinction of a culture or a, or, or held within a cultural distinction. So to be a being, the native Americans used to have a phrase. It wasn't directly like translatable to being, but it essentially meant being to be a being was to be culturally sound. To be a being was to be entirely one's soul, plus the soul of the generations inside. Now to be black is to be cosmic, is to be what they call terrestrial earth is to be the womb of humanity, the generations together as one. That's what black being is, among others. So we got to stop this nonsense. And I'd love to hear, I'd love to know what you think about this, ladies and gentlemen, I would. Leave any questions, comments, concerns below. Peace.